Hello viewers, I am Kausalya. Today we are going to solve problems related with Norton's theorem. The problem is determine the Norton's equivalent circuit for the given circuit shown in figure. So this is the given circuit diagram and we have to draw Norton's equivalent circuit for this circuit. So how to draw Norton's equivalent circuit? A Norton's equivalent circuit will always have a short circuit current. Parallel to the short circuit current we will be having a or thevenin and finally there will be some load resistance if it is given in the problem but here in this case you see there are there is no resistor or something which is connected across these terminals right so we will start with the first step here the first thing is we have to short circuit the terminal right here a and b are the terminals the first step is we have to short circuit right and the current that flows through this terminal is known as short circuit current. Right. So, here in this case when you look carefully, we are having a current source. And when this current source reaches this point, okay, what happens? The current gets divided into two. Right. And this current will flow through this 3 ohm, through this 4 ohm. And since we are having a short circuit path, current won't flow through this 5 ohm. It will flow through this 4 ohm and then proceed with this terminal and it will again return back. Right. So here, this is the concept. Right. That is, we are bypassing this 5 ohm. Okay. This 5 ohm doesn't come into picture. So when you redraw this circuit, you see here, we are having a 25 amps. We are having this 5 ohm right and again here 2 ohm and the current flows through this 3 ohm and 4 ohm and through this wire so again this 3 plus 4 are said to be in series right therefore here i have drawn this 2 ohm parallel to this 2 ohm we are having this 7 ohm right am i making things clear right so now here what do we need to calculate? We need to calculate the current that flows through this short circuit path or in other words you see this 3 ohm and 4 ohm and this short circuit path all are connected in series. Right? So in series the current flow remains the same. So here in this case when you calculate the current that flows through this 7 ohm resistor it is the short circuit current that flows through this terminal AB. Right? So, when you apply the current division formula, what is the formula? Total current into opposite resistance divided by total resistance. So, here total current it is nothing but 25 amps into opposite resistance. The resistance which is opposite to this 7 ohm is 2 ohm, right? So, 2 divided by total resistance is 2 plus 7. So, this is what I had written here. So, the answer is 5.55 amps, right? Now the next step is we need to calculate Thevenin's resistance. So here how to calculate Thevenin's resistance? Again, we have to remove all the sources. Either it may be a voltage source or it may be a current source. So here you see again when you look back the given problem. Here in this case you have to remove this current source. Right. And you have to keep this circuit as such. So when you do this you see. We will be having a diagram like this, right? Since it is a current source, whenever the current source is removed, it becomes an open circuit, right? So again, Thevenin's resistance, we have to look back from the terminal. So assume a current flows through this terminal like this. So when it reaches this node, what happens? The current gets divides, okay? The current is divided. So this current flows through this 3 ohm. Now when it reaches this junction, what happens here? Whether the current will divide? Certainly not. Because here the thing is, you see, this is an open circuit. So current will never flow through the open circuit path. So what happens here? The current that flows through this 3 ohm again comes down and flows through this 2 ohm. Right. So, what does it mean, right? So, this 4 ohm, 3 ohm and this 2 ohm are connected in series. And that combination comes in parallel with this 5 ohm because here the current gets divided. Right. So, 
when you simplify when you again redraw the circuit you see across the terminals a and b i am having 5 ohm this 5 ohm as such and now we have combined all these three resistors so that gives the value of 9 ohm and that 9 ohm comes in parallel with this 5 ohm right so now how to calculate the r terminal so just a parallel combination of resistors so r1 into r2 divided by r1 plus r2 so that gives the answer of 3.21 ohms here right now we will draw the final norton's equivalent circuit so this is our final norton's equivalent circuit we are having a short circuit current and we are having a thevenin's resistance in parallel with this short circuit current right so here comes the end of this problem we will proceed with the next one so our next problem is determine the current flowing through the 5 ohm resistor in the circuit shown in figure by using Norton's theorem. So here we need to calculate the current that flows through this 5 ohm resistor. Okay, that is mentioned as the terminals A and B here. Right. So as usual, the normal thing is what we are supposed to do. We have to short circuit the terminal. Right. That is the first step to calculate the short circuit current. So here in this case, you see after short circuiting the terminal AB, we are having a circuit diagram like this, right? This is A and this is B, right? The same circuit diagram after short circuiting this terminal, we are having a circuit diagram like this, right? Now, can you guess what will be the current that flows through this terminal AB? Because you see here we are having a current source, right? A current will always select the least resistance path, right? So, this current will flow in this way, right? And after reaching this junction also, okay? Even though after reaching this junction, the current won't get divided into two because here we are having a 5 ohm resistance and here we are having nothing, right? Therefore, the current will always prefer to flow through the least resistance path. Therefore, this entire current 30 amps will be flowing through this terminal AB, right? Therefore, here the short circuit current is 30 amps, right? Now, the next step is we have to calculate the resistance. So, how to calculate the resistance here? We have to remove the voltage source, okay, as well as the load terminal. So, here in this case, you see here, the current source is removed and the terminal across which we need to calculate the current is removed, right? So, here this is our RAB that is resistance across this terminal AB we need to calculate, right? So, here again when you look back you see you have to solve this combination of resistors as well as this combination of resistors, right? So, here in this case you see First, we are eliminating, that is solving this side, right. Since this is an open circuit path, no current will flow through this 10 ohm resistance, right. So, therefore, we can remove this 10 ohm resistance. So, when you remove, you see, our circuit gets simplified like this, right. Now, the next thing is, you see, here, these two resistors are in parallel, right. So, when you solve this, what happens when you have resistors of same value in parallel then their equivalent resistance is equal to half of its value that is here we are having 1 ohm and 1 ohm right when you solve their equivalent resistance will be 0.5 ohms right that is a shortcut even you can solve that is 1 into 1 divided by 1 plus 1 you see 1 by 2 that gives 0.5 obviously right so here these two resistors combine together and becomes 0.5. So, that 0.5 resistor comes in series with this 2, right? So, 2 plus 0.5 gives 2.5. So, here, this is how our circuit is, right? Then, the next thing is, again, you see, these two resistors are parallelly connected, right? So, as usual, use the formula R1 into R2 divided by R1 plus R2. So, that gives the answer as 1.67 ohms. Now, we have calculated the short circuit current and this Thevenin's resistance. 
the next step is we are going to draw the Norton's equivalent circuit. So this is your current and this is your resistance and this is your load resistance, right? Here the problem is we need to calculate the current that flows through this 5 ohm resistance. So here again we have to use the current division formula. So total current into opposite resistance. The resistance which is opposite to this 5 ohm is 1.67 divided by total resistance. So you have to add this. So here the final answer is 7.51 amps here. Right. So this problem gets over here. We will move with the next one. Okay, this problem is a bit different. Right. So let's see. Replace the given network shown in figure by a single current source in parallel with the resistance. So here it is indirectly asked, right? A single current source in parallel with the resistance is nothing but our Norton's equivalent circuit. And here this is our given circuit diagram. Here we are having a current source as well as a voltage source. So here the thing is we are going to use both the superposition theorem and Norton's theorem to solve this circuit. So here in this case, you see, the first thing is we are going to consider only one current source at a time, right? So here I am considering only 10 amps. I have removed this voltage source, right? And the thing is we have to short circuit the terminals, right? So here the terminals are short circuited. So again, now tell me what will be the current flowing through this terminal AB? Any guess here? Again, the same concept, the current will always flow through the less resistance path. So here the current while reaching this junction, it won't get divided and the entire current will flow through this terminal, right? So the current I dash N is nothing but 10 amps, right? So here it is up to you, okay? You can give any name for this current. So here it is 10 amps. Now the next thing is we are going to consider this 20 volt source. And we are going to calculate the current that flows through the terminal AB. So when you redraw this circuit, you see here, whenever the current source is removed, it becomes an open circuit, right? So when you redraw this circuit, our circuit will look like this. We will be having a 20 volt source, 3 ohm and a 6 ohm, right? So this is the current that flows through this AB, that is I double dash N. Right. So here in this case, again you see the same thing, the current that flows from this 40 volt, sorry, 20 volt, right. When it reaches this junction, again it won't get divided into two. The entire current will flow through this 6 ohm and it flow like this and it will again come back like this, right. So here in this case, to calculate the value of current, we have to consider only 6 ohm, right. So 20 by 6, that gives the answer of 3.33 amps. So here in this case, when you look at both the circuits, the current always flows from A to B. Therefore, the total current that flows through this terminal AB is, we have to add those two currents. So when you add the currents, you see that gives the answer as 13.33 amps. Right. Now we have calculated the current. This current is nothing but our short circuit current. Now the next thing is we need to calculate the value of resistance. So this is the given circuit diagram. So here the current sources are open circuited and the voltage sources are short circuited. Right. Again when you redraw this circuit it will look like this. Can you make a guess? You see we are having 3 ohm and from this junction there is a 6 ohm which connects to A. So at this junction there is a 6 ohm that gets connected with A here. And the remaining things the same. Right. So here again, what will be the value of RAB? So here RAB is again, you see the current that flows through this 6 ohm. Okay. It won't divide it at this junction. Again, the same current will flow like this. Therefore, the resistance which is to be taken into account is only 6 ohms. Therefore, RAB is 6 ohms here. Right. Now, finally, we are going to draw the Norton's equivalent circuit. So, the Norton's equivalent circuit, it has a short circuit current 
and a resistance parallel to it. So the value of short circuit current is 13.33 amps and the value of this resistance is 6 ohms. Right. So here comes the end of this video. If you have any doubt, let me know in the comment section. Thank you.